You don't have to use a five-day program. You find one that works for you. Like I said, it could be anything, two, three, four days. Full body works great. Push, pull, leg. Whatever is comfortable for you, do it. I just want to share, share with you what I'm doing. Hey, gang. Welcome back to Mark 60 Plus Fitness Journey. Okay, today I'm going to talk about my workout program, specifically my five-day workout program. Now, I've been doing this, using this five-day program, probably for five or six months. Now, if you've been watching my channel for a while, you know that Mr. Mark here likes to change up his workout program every so often. I guess for no other reason, just because I get bored and want to do something different. But now, um... I'm right about that time where I more than would normally change up, but I'm not going to because this five-day workout program right here is working out very well for me. And I see no need to change it up moving forward with it, so I'm just gonna stick with it. So today, what I thought I would do is revisit this and show you exactly what my five-day workout program looks like. Let's get at it. All right, now I'm just gonna arbitrarily start with what I call day one and it is going to be quads now I've talked about this before if you've seen any of my leg workouts my quad day is only quads I do hamstrings on a deadlift day which I'll talk about here shortly so on quad day what I've been doing recently is using front squats in lieu of back squats and I've talked about that at length about why I'm not doing back squats right now and I'll link a video up here in the corner if you're curious about why that is. But I'm doing front squats now, and generally speaking, using a three by five progressive overload approach. Sometimes, my last workout, for example, I did sets of three just to change it up a bit. And I like to do sets of three sometimes just because I can uh, touch higher weights than I would with a three by five uh, per, uh, approach. Now, three by three approach, obviously I'll probably do another set or two just to get the volume in, but even so, it's not a whole lot of volume on this day. So front squats, progressive overload approach, generally a three by five type of thing. Then I'll jump into some leg presses. Now this could be, you know, just your regular leg press machine, which I like. I'll do double leg, a couple double leg sets, and then I'll do one set of isolation left and right. I like to do that. Just to isolate my left leg a little bit more because it seems to lag. Well, it doesn't seem to, it does lag. So, leg presses or do a, a similar type of movement where the lower back is not quite so involved, like hack squats, for example. And uh, I'll, I'll alternate between leg presses and hack squats, you know, between sessions. And generally speaking, I'll finish up with split squats, some sort of split squat, whether it be a dumbbell split squat. Uh, Bulgarian split squats I'm talking about and um, lately I've started digging these uh, really liking the Smith machine split squats and I've done a video on on that too and usually I forgot to add this but usually I'll, I'll finish up with uh, leg extensions it's not a, it's not a gigantically long day but it's pretty intense particularly here it's low volume high intensity here and the leg presses, I uh, forgot to mention, I generally stay in the 8 to 10 rep range here. Same with the split squats. And then with the leg extensions, probably, you know, 8 to 12 reps. That's my quad day. Okay, let's move on to day two, chest, triceps, calves. And before I get into this too much, I just want to say that None of this, these are set in stone in, in the sense that I can't deviate from these exercises on any given chest and tricep day. It's just a chest and tricep workout. Now having said that, I do and have been uh, focusing on and stuck with the bench press as a common starter for a while. Just as in the leg, the quad day, the same applies to that. I always stick with the front squats lately as a common starting point a big compound movement. Uh, so anyway, I start with the bench press on my chest day, and lately I've been doing three by five progressive overload approach. Again, I might change that up and move into some triples, some singles, just to change it up a bit. I'm not nearly as concerned about my bench press number progression as I am with my front squat and deadlift, for example, but I still want to see some progress there. So I start with the 
the bigger of the movements for chest eight bench press and then move on to a little less so although this is still pretty much a big compound movement incline work now if you've been watching my channel for a while you know i have a propensity <laughs> and i favor dumbbell incline work i just haven't done that in a while i may go back to that lately i've been focusing on machine incline presses chest presses and smith machine so you know the, the incline chest press machines i like those if you find the right one that gives you the right elbow placement and the right movement uh they're great and a smith machine with a bench that's also very good I, I i like these it's just sometimes it's hard to get a smith machine so this these these chest incline chest press machines are good and generally these are in the eight to ten rep range three sets then i'll move into a fly type movement and lately i've been uh, well not lately i can't remember the last time i actually did like flat dumbbell flies i haven't done those in eons but i'll do a pec deck type movement and that could be a machine it could be cables this is it to me it's all the same thing a cable fly and a pec deck is kind of the same movement three sets here in the 10 to 12 rep range and then i'll do some tricep work and again i don't want to get terribly specific on the tricep work i just want to make sure that it's around nine sets i don't want to go over nine sets i want to stick around but i don't want to you know i don't want to do too little work but i think nine sets is a great um a great uh a point for me to work with the triceps and generally the tricep work is uh, like overhead I think they're called French presses dumbbell overhead uh, tricep extensions and some cable work but again nine sets in the in the 10 to 12 rep range and then I will do some calves on this day and usually that's gonna be uh, you know the regular standing calf press range uh, raises the uh, seated calf uh, calf raises that type of thing and usually I'll, I'll do no more than three sets of those even across you know doing two different movements like the standing calf raise or the seated I'll only do three sets but it's going to be a higher rep range and usually it's kind of a drop set type thing and usually it's you know 15 20 25 reps on each set there's day two chest triceps calves all right day three now, you know, remember, <laughs> on day one, quad day, I mentioned I don't do hamstrings on quad day. I do them on deadlift day, and here we are, day three. Hope you can see that. Day three, deadlifts, hamstrings. And oddly enough, on my deadlift day, I do deadlifts. And again, if you've been watching my videos recently, um, I have a uh, strength goal I want to meet by the end of this year, 2024, a legit 450-pound deadlift. And so this, this number is is uh, important to me in uh, much more so than say the bench press number for example so i put a lot of effort into this and generally speaking i use a three by five uh three sets five rep progressive overload overload approach but recently i've been uh, favoring some uh, sets of threes so i'll do generally like five sets of three reps that are progressive overload approach and may and and do a single at the end if i feel like it i don't want to get too crazy when i'm doing these five by threes because the weight gets a little heavier and i don't think we should do heavy singles you know one rep max is all that often particularly at 64 and a half years old so anyway deadlift day progressive overload approach three by five generally three sets five reps is generally my approach but i don't have any problem going uh and changing it up with some uh, triples like five sets of threes and then maybe a single um, one rep max at the end every so often then for the hamstring work I've uh, started doing RDLs I think I've done these for six seven sessions now and really loving these things and um, I don't know why I avoided these so long but I got me a, a nice set of straps and I do a um, use a double overhand grip for my RDLs whereas on my deadlift I have an over under grip but the RDLs um, I can tell a difference already it just feels good it really hammers my hamstrings but in particular hits my glutes really hard too in a good way and of course the lower back so i'll do three sets of eight of these uh, i think the last session i did I actually did four sets depends on how I, how i feel but three sets of eight reps i think is a good combo combination between strength and maybe some hypertrophy there too deadlifts rdls 
then I'll do uh, three sets of leg curls and um, that could be uh, laying leg curls, the seated leg curls, it could be the, the uh, hamstring isolation machines that you've seen us use before, but only three sets of leg curls and generally that's going to be in the 10 to 12 rep range. So it's not a big day, it's not a long day, but it is a very intense day. Day three, deadness, hamstrings. Alrighty, moving on. Day four, shoulders and calves. Now, I do have a dedicated shoulder day. Some folks poo-poo it, but I like it. It's been in my five-day program for a while. Seems to work, so I'm gonna stick with it. This is a, a lighter day. I like to call this a very active rest day. Not a ton of work here in that it's all shoulder work and not a lot of like heavy compound overhead presses, for example. I tend towards dumbbell work on shoulder day. And lately, I've been starting with three sets of heavy partial laterals where you get a weight where you can get this high about this point right here, maybe 50%, not all the way to, to full perpendicular, and uh, three sets of 12 reps or so like that. Really hammers, at least my, hammers my lateral delts. I don't know, hope you can still see that. Then I'll follow that up with some light full laterals in the three by 15 rep range. And lately, I saw this, Charles Glass did this, I saw this just recently. On these laterals here, he bends his elbows, but he pulls up with his elbows, <laughs> which might, you know, it, it, I'm sure a lot of you folks do this, but I never really focused on pulling up with my elbows. Instead of going straight arm, full perpendicular like this, which is great, just bend the elbows and pull with the elbows. Now, the beauty of that is that it does hit the laterals, but for me, it also really hammers the rear delts. So it's like a twofer. We're gonna get laterals and rear delts, and it feels great, it really does. So light full laterals, pulling with the elbows, three to 15 uh, reps. Three sets of 15 reps or so. Um, you might notice on shoulder day, I go a little, a little higher on the rep count. I just think the shoulders respond, or my shoulders respond better to a higher rep count type of workout. And then I'll go to some rear delt specific work. And um, again, dumbbell approach of reverse flies. And you've seen me do these two on my um, shoulder videos. Hinge my, hinge my hip and, uh, and I'll just get the dumbbells out in front of me and just do like a reverse fly. Again, that, that really hammers my, my rear delts really well. I'll do three sets of those in a 12 to 15-ish rep range. And then I'll do some uh, cable crossovers. Again, something I just discovered, and on these cable crossovers, I'm gonna have the, uh, the cables in front of me and I'm gonna keep my arms straight when I, when I come back like this. And I found if I keep my arms perfectly straight, it again isolates the rear delts much better than the way I was doing it, which was kind of a, you know, like a C, open, closed C type approach here with the elbows bent. Straight arm like that worked really well for me. Three to 12, three sets of 12 ish reps. And again, you could go up to 15. So three, six, nine, 12 good sets of shoulders. It's a good shoulder day. And again, I'll finish up with calves. Again, in the two, three, uh, set range, higher reps, maybe drop sets, like I said, you know, 15, 20, 25 reps, to whatever feels good on that day. And again, on the, I, mean, I haven't mentioned this, but uh, on the calves, I'll uh, modify my, my foot stance, toes in, toes neutral, toes pointing out, just to get some, hit the various uh, angles on the calves. There you go, day four, shoulders, calves. All right, and here we are, day five, back and biceps. Now recently, when I say recently, I mean in the last five, six back sessions, I've started incorporating a strength movement, a compound movement, and that is the bent over barbell row. And this is in lieu of me generally, uh, and then historically starting with pull-ups. I was a pull-up heavy, pull-up centric, back guy and I still love pull-ups for me pull-ups physiologically really activate all of my back muscles and I get good development 
using pull-ups, but I wanted a, a bigger uh, a strength movement, another strength movement in my program, so hence, bent over barbell rows. And I'll do these in a progressive overload manner too, except I'm using eight reps as the determinant as to whether I go up. Uh, three sets, eight reps, progressive overload. Sometimes I'll do a fourth rep here, just depends on how I feel, but generally three reps, and I mean three sets in the eight rep range. Then I will follow up with some vertical pulls, and those are going to primarily consist of pull-ups. I'll do three, four sets, and I'll do each of those sets to failure. Now, generally, after being pre-exhausted here with the barbell rows, uh, let's say I, I do three sets to failure. The first set may be 15, and then the second set, you know, 12. Anyway, just do each set to failure. So by this time here, you've got, you know, um, three uh, or six to eight good sets of back work in already. So that's good. Then I'll finish or I'll move on to uh, the hammer strength high row machines or uh, any high row machine. It's just we happen to have hammer strength at, this, at the gym. And the high rows are the ones where you're seated and you kind of have a neutral grip and you just pull with your elbows in like this. It's kind of a combination between uh, a row and a vertical pull. So I like these. So I'll do the uh, high rows or sometimes I'll just do dumbbell rows. I like dumbbell rows too. They work well. That's just more of a row movement than the high row is. That's more row centric, but it's still pretty close to a high row only, only in reverse form, if you know what I mean. But I'll do three sets of eight reps here. I want to keep that kind of heavy. And then I'll generally finish up with some seated cable pull downs forgot to put cable in here some seated cable pull downs and generally speaking i'm going to keep that in the eight to ten rep range i'm going to do three sets so i'll do two sets um with double hands you have double a double <laughs> cable pull down and then i'll do a third set of isolations where i'll isolate one side left and right obviously and I like to do that because just as with my left leg, my left side of my back tends to lag a bit. So I like to do an isolation movement to make sure I'm hitting the left side a little bit more than the right. So there you go. Day five, back in biceps. Okay, that brings us to arguably the most important day of this whole program, or any program, three day, four day, five day, full body, push, pull, leg, whatever program you're using, you need to incorporate a rest day. And I say that because I have a hard time incorporating a rest day. I guess that's a good place to be in that I love to work out, but I have to make sure that I give myself a chance to recuperate. The body needs some time to rebuild, recuperate. So rest day is very important, particularly as we age. I guess that goes without saying, but I'd like to reiterate, make sure you do your rest day. Now, one other thing before I forget. Now, you saw the resistance training there, and to me, that's kind of, maybe not even kind of, it is a high-intensity interval training for the most part. In that, my heart rate hits, a, it, it, it spikes, and in particular, let's say deadlift day, sometimes it hits 150. And that's for no more than a minute in that particular, say, set of deadlifts. Heart rate spikes, I let it go down, recuperate, and do another set. That is, in fact, high, high intensity interval training. That's an anaerobic component of my workout. I also have an, a, an aerobic portion, which is a low heart rate, low impact cardio portion which you may have guessed it is walking. I love to walk, I do it in the morning. I get up before I eat breakfast, not that that matters, but I, um, I get up in the morning when it's calm, quiet outside and do a 45 minute to an hour walk. As I said, low heart rate, low impact, fun, and it's a nice cardio juxtaposition <laughs> to the uh, resistance training. So anyway, there it is. That is my five day program. 
Uh, you don't have to use a five-day program. You find one that works for you. Like I said, it could be anything, two, three, four days. Full body works great. Push, pull, leg. Whatever is comfortable for you, do it. I just want to share, share with you what I'm doing. And uh, that's it. And before I forget, I want to say thank you, thank you, thank you for taking time out of your busy day to hang out with me today. It's kind of long-winded. <laughs> These videos always go longer than I anticipate. But thank you for being here, particularly if you're still here. And if you would, as always, hit that like button. Leave a comment. Just stop and leave a comment. Just say hi, whatever you want to do. But just please comment. Uh, share this with your friends. And if you haven't already, please consider clicking that subscribe button. Like I said before, this is a cool group, small group, slowly growing. But we'd like to have you as a member among us. Really would. All right. Yes, with that, I will say, till next time, go get them. Mark out.